1937, the year in which the most extensive construction work was carried out on Obersalzburg by Reichsleiter Martin Bormann. In addition to barracks and administrative buildings, various private houses were built as well as greenhouses and a model farm, the Gutshof. As a former farmer, Bormann paid particular attention to the execution of this agricultural estate, which was intended to ensure the self-sufficiency of the ruling elite who had settled on Obersalzburg. In 1936, the estate was built as a model farm for Hitler. Until 1945, it was a busy place with dairy cattle and pig breeding. In the course of the construction of the estate, an apiary was to be built in addition to an apple juice press house. Plans for this were drawn up by the architect, Professor Roderick Fick, here on the right in the picture, who had already directed the construction of numerous other buildings on Obersalzburg. The future location of the apiary was chosen by Bormann himself. It was located above the Platterhof in the so-called Landler Forest in the immediate vicinity of Klingeck Hill, a high point in front with a magnificent view which we will talk about later. The access was initially via the Kustein Road up to the Landler Forest. Then a narrow hunting trail branches off to the right in the direction of Klingeck. The choice of the location of the apiary was surprising because both the altitude of over 1,100 meters as well as the surrounding flower-poor forest area was anything but favorable to the economic operation of a bee house. Nevertheless, Bormann had the facility built at exactly this location because actually the economic viability of the project was not in the foreground for him from the beginning, but rather the cellar facilities underneath, which are still preserved today. Even from a distance, the overgrown remains of the foundation of the apiary are clearly visible. Daylight entered the facility through several light shafts, For decades, numerous rumors have circulated about the purpose of this project. After the end of the war, the apiary disappeared. Whether it was demolished or fell victim to a fire is no longer exactly traceable today. In any case, the entrance to the underground cellar vault was no longer visible for many years. It was not until the mid-1970s that a former guard soldier of an SS Mountain unit brought the building back to life by passing on his knowledge to a researcher interested in history. On the slope side, the exit led to the underground catacomb, which, since its construction, has borne the peculiar code name N2. News quickly spread among amateur researchers of an unknown bunker system or crypt at Obersalzburg. But why did Bormann have such an elaborate cellar vault built in this remote part of Obersalzburg? Although the rooms, which also had sanitary facilities, were initially used for processing bee honey, later, however, in the years when the battleground shifted further and further into the German Reich, Huge amounts of food were stored here on Bormann's orders. This was precisely the reason why Bormann had the facility built, a depot for storing essential goods for the Führer Hitler and his closest entourage. The apiary itself only served as camouflage. After the end of the war, the food was looted by local people. 
It would be possible that the name of the facility N2 was possibly derived from the name Nodipo 2 or Natlagar 2, which means emergency deposit or emergency storage. In the last weeks of the declining Third Reich, however, the facility served another purpose. Since April 1945, two naval radio trucks had been requested by Admiral Donitz and were under the command of Rear Admiral Jesko von Putkamer, who was stationed at Obersalzburg. From the exposed hill, Klingekov, mentioned at the beginning, the radio trucks had an exceptionally high transmitting and receiving power. From here, in the last days before the end of the war, encrypted messages were sent to South America on waves 34.4 to 34.9 in the so-called Crocodile Code. The radio trucks were in use around the clock, and the operators worked in shifts. Since the bee house was only a few hundred meters away from the Klingik Hill, the radio operators took up quarters there. However, where the designation N2 comes from is no longer comprehensible today. Also, the derivation from the designation Nachrichtenzentral, Intelligence Center, would be conceivable. Then, in the night of May 1st to 2nd, 1945, when the last radio message was sent and the radio operators had finally left Ober Salzburg, it became quiet in Bormann's Bee House. Only a few days later, locals came and looted Bormann's Food Depot. This photo from 1997 shows mountains of rusted cans that were lying in the immediate vicinity of N2. It can be assumed that the canned goods were opened and consumed by the station radio unit personnel. The dishes came from the Platterhof, which was not unusual because both the Kustein House and other hotel businesses were additionally supplied with dishes from the party hotel during this time. In the meantime, the pillars have been severely damaged by surface water and frost, and the vault is in danger of collapsing. An inspection is urgently not recommended. It is only a question of time until this building will also have to bow to the forces of the elements and its existence will finally become a part of the history of Obersalzburg. <laughs>